Okay, well, episode 17? Episode 17, Rare episode. Coin TV. Thanks for joining us, everybody. All right. Yeah. Here we are again. It's kind of a uh, mid-show, mid-A&A show uh, update recap on a few things that, that uh, you guys should be paying attention to at the show. We felt like there was so much going on. We shouldn't skip and just recap. We should actually do a mid-show show. That's right. A mid-show show to talk about all the exciting things that are going on at the A&A show. Uh, one of the things that we really did not uh, talk about the first time around was the fact that on exhibit are the uh, the world famous 1933 Double Eagles, the highly contentious, currently government owned, right, 1933 Double Eagles. That's right. That were passed down the line through Izzy Sweat. Almost became a family heirloom, I guess you can say, until they decided to do the right thing, which did not work out in their favor. Uh, but they did uh, turn those coins in to be evaluated by the uh, the federal government, and they said, well, you know, after after much review, that uh, they are theirs. Years and years of court cases. Right. Well, right. the whole thing just started off wrong. They I did. mean, didn't the Secret Service come, like, take them, or did the Mint just they, take them? See, Whatever happened, it was they were. They were given to the mint to authenticate, and then all of a sudden they weren't theirs anymore. And I don't know if all of them were given the first time, or if it was a few specimens were given to authenticate, and the rest were still held by the family, and then that changed over time. I don't know if we'll ever know the exact real path uh, yeah. that, that was taken. I, I'm not sure it's been documented. But, but. but the Langbord family operated in good faith. And they did. Said, they did. Hey, government, we have some coins that we were given from our grandfather. We want to know if they're real. Right. Could you check these out and just tell you, tell us if they're real? And they said, yes, they are real, but they're also ours. Right. <laughs> and they're not yours anymore. Right. So, well, they're on display. So at least we'll be able to enjoy them, you know, in exhibit for you know uh, face to face. Interestingly, I personally saw them on display. I don't know if you did. I at, saw one of them at the Los Angeles a and show years and years ago. I saw all eight of them oh, wow. at the Denver a and in oh, 2006. Cool. Nice. All nice. of them in one place, one time. Wow. It was an area maybe 30 by 30 feet or something okay. with this really nice carpet, like, like red carpet um, and there was probably 20 cops. Oh wow. That were not shy about letting me know they were there. Yeah, yeah. I'd imagine they were in groups. There were like bunches of cops. I'd imagine them. they don't plan on letting those coins go anytime soon. They've uh, it's taken now, them this this long to get them back, so as far as they're concerned, that's it. They're, it's gonna be there. And they forever. were kind of cool, but when you walked up, they all started looking at you. It was like uh Yeah. I get it. I get it, but I'm not the guy you're looking for. Right. Yeah. So beyond the uh, the double eagles, I know there's a few other things we wanted to kind of share with uh, with, uh, with the audience. Uh, the Confederate half dollars you were telling me was pretty. Yeah. Speaking of contentious. Right. There's another contentious topic, with with like all the crazy political stuff going on right now. Confederate memorabilia, Confederate flags, taking down of statues, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's a reflection of a. Um, of a different day in our country, you know, when when indeed, you know, when when the when the spirit of of our country was a little bit different, um, and uh, and the way that people thought about our country was a little bit different. I think we've we've, we've come a long ways. Uh, some things just never change, you know. But yeah, we're we're no we less divided Here we are. right now, right? right? I mean, if if people had a little more balls, we probably would have another civil war. But we've grown so apathetic that that's just not even an option right now. So instead, we just like talk smack on social media. That's our version of civil social war. Media. It's ugly. Yeah, it's really ugly. Yeah. And that is our version of civil war is social media. It's civil verbal war. Now. Yeah, it's just anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the point is this this Confederate half dollars on display. You don't catch too many waves about the appropriateness of different artifacts in the coin community. Not I feel as, as in the way that you do of maybe Confederate uniforms or flags or statues or it, that kind of thing. It doesn't quite have the same negative connotation that let's say Nazi memorabilia. Yeah. Has. I mean, you know, obviously right. Nazi coins and flags and and medals and stuff like that. It's it's a 
not only, I, you know, there are certain laws and regulations that, that you have to adhere to with those types of assets. It's also very, you know, there's a lot of a lot of blood, a lot of souls that are tied to those to those types of collectibles. So you, you really want to be very respectful and, and very mindful of, of what you, what you're working with. There. Oh, sure. Yeah. Now with the Confederate stuff and and coins being so historical, I feel like that's really the approach people take with this. Is it's a historical artifact? It's yeah, this thing yeah. that that represents a period in history. And so I feel like there's not as much stigma around say that Confederate half dollars we may have as um, some other Confederate artifacts that are used in different ways. Yeah, and, and the reality is too, I think that a lot of people that, that collect Confederate stuff just like Civil War memorabilia. And that happens to be, you know, one of the defining, you know, distinguishing marks of the Civil War is the fact that we had, you know, the Confederate, uh, you know, versus the, uh, versus the Union, the Confederacy versus the Union, you know, yeah. so that's that's kind of the big. Separation. So this this one tells an interesting story. This was a half dollar that's currently graded specimen 40. Okay. But this one went on a little bit of a journey. This one was discovered in a coin roll of change in 1880. Wow. Yeah. And this is one of only a dozen specimens or so that are known. That's cool. Uh, but in change a specimen 40. Right. And this is the only time I can think of that there's a specimen that was discovered in change. I, I can't think of any other one. I, I really honestly can't. Hey, hey, to the one numismatist watching this show right now, tell us what other specimen was discovered in change. Please, if you know of one, let us know. We, please, we would love to highlight do. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I believe this is it may or may not be the coin that sold at Heritage for about half a million uh, several okay. months ago. It's insured for a million now. Um, but speaking of finding something in change, uh, there's another coin that's going to be at the show that also uh, was was literally found in in change that was given back to a, a young man uh, in in the early 50s and 60s uh, in change at school. Went into his to his uh, his cafeteria. And uh, what came out? From from the lunch lady. From the lunch lady. God, if she was alive, she'd be so pissed. Yeah. She'd be like, give that back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I never should have let it go. Yeah. But uh, a 1943, not steel, copper. A copper penny. A 1943 copper penny. Yeah. One of 17 known and the first specimen that and, was ever found. And as a lot of you guys in the audience know, some may not, you know, in 1943, we were in the middle of World War II, so the government recalled all the copper that was at the mints to use it for ammunition, and of course, replaced it with steel to be to be turned into planchets and then struck into coins. Um, evidently, you know, at, uh, at the Philadelphia Mint, the San Francisco Mint, there were a few pieces, I think, what, 17, you said? 17 have okay. been discovered so far. There, There's some conjecture there's a little bit of argument hmm. about were those made on purpose or did some idiot at the mint accidentally send them through the line you can a strong argument there but I, I I would imagine that you'd have to be aware that you that you did that tens of millions produced right yeah I believe uh, I added up all the numbers one time there's a lot of steelies made in the, 43 between, I, between the three mints I, I want to say there's there may even be close to 100 million Steelies that were made that year. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm certain it's over 10 million. Yeah, but 100 million makes more sense. And because, it makes more and sense. Because this is John, a video. Hang on. A second. It makes more sense. Get it? Oh, you. Do you, do you see what I did there? I do. Uh, I I said and because sense. I'm a dork. Uh, oh. Yeah. He brought the red book. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I know, guys. You see, guys, sense. S-E-N-S-E. -S does it make sense? But sense is spelled C-E-N-T-S. So oh, if, yeah. if we add it all up, I, I'm guessing it's close to a half, oh, a, a half a billion. Whoa. 500 million uh, copper cents. Wow. Which sounds like a lot, but the next year, the next year they made copper cents, they struck over does that say one billion yes. four hundred thirty-five million? Almost two billion cents the next year. I guess that post-war economy was roaring, but uh, 
kind of kind of an interesting little study 1944 there, right? is not a rare penny nor is 43 for that matter i'm just saying guys they made a billion pennies that year put them away they're not rare yes don't you love when you get calls from people that have steel cents and they're like i think i have one of those pennies everybody talks about and you're like you have the opposite yeah, of you one have of those pennies that everyone talks about. Literally the have... exact opposite of what you want to have. Right. But you think it's of the same value as the thing you want to have. I know. They're like, this thing's worth a million dollars. I'm like, I'll sell you a hundred of them for two bucks. Yeah. And that's me making a profit. Yeah, nobody's ever taken me up on that. You? No. 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 Not yet. Maybe one day. Yeah, maybe one day. We'll see. Okay. So yeah, on top of the penny. That uh, was the first one ever discovered, the 43 penny. Uh, the guy that got it from the lunch lady at 16 years old went to a coin show, had it authenticated, and now all these years it's... later, when this older gentleman at his nursing home Love it. decided to get it certified, uh, he did not decide to get it certified. He gave it to Heritage. Heritage is gonna sell it at auction. Okay. NGC certified the coin. Um, but it's just kind of interesting. This is the first one that came out all the way back. I believe it was in the 60s. Wow. When they found this good in for, but change good for him. You know, he, from the lunch lady. And he's waited this long. He's going to have his day. He got to enjoy the, the coin his entire life. Yes. And now, and now him and his estate are going to benefit from this fantastic sale. Go Heritage. That's great. Go Heritage. Yeah, it's probably going to be a lot of money. That's fantastic. Probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Um, there's... I have heard of a lot of people that found those keeping them. So if that's the case, and I can't recall any that have sold at public auction, there was w the second coin ever found was put in an auction, but then pulled out of auction. Mm. And there was a lawsuit over it and all this kind of stuff. It was probably stacks Bowers. Okay. Cause this is like way back in the sixties. Well, it was probably only Bowers back then, right? Yeah. But whatever, yeah. Yeah. whatever. Or Bowers um, and Ruddy. Maybe. It, it was this auction company okay. in the second. So anyways, I, I tried to look at all the lineage and I, I'm i not sure one of these has ever come to auction. So this is one to really pay attention That's to. That's pretty epic. Yeah. That's pretty epic. Big time. It really is. Yeah. You know, and there's also, of course, there's a lot of education going on at the show. Uh, and there's some ancient coin classes, some beginning coin collecting classes, some grading classes. Uh, the ANA is even holding their 127th annual award ceremony. Uh, giving out wow. the awards to the uh, to the numismatist for the year, the best book of the year, uh, the the best dealer of the year, potentially somebody who's giving back to the dealing community, to the, mm. to the collector community. So it's kind of fun stuff. Very cool. Yeah. I hear there might even be some space stuff. Oh, yeah. And that's really a big topic these days, isn't it? Well, sure. Yeah. Because the Space Force yes. was just announced. The Space Force was just announced. Which is Star Wars. It is, yeah, right. Um, so, or they're gonna start training X-wing pilots any day. <laughs> yeah. Is that an X-wing pilot I see flying around? Maybe. Okay. I think. Yeah. I think that was definitely an X-wing fighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, Luke Skywalker has recently passed away, so oh, that's right. he can no longer train X-wing pilots. But and if I would have seen the movie you saw, I would have known that too. Yep. Just spoiled that <laughs> for you. What's up now? <laughs> you got me so mad. I might just you take knew this it. fireball right here. No, don't do it, John. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, don't do it John. Okay. Don't do it. All right. I got All right. my fireball and I'll straight up. Okay. I'll fireball battle you, bro. Okay. Well, we'll see. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some space stuff, man. There's going to be this whole, whole lineage of space items that are outrageous to me. There was the uh, eight by 11 uh, lithograph of Neil Armstrong. Uh, cer Very cool. Certified by CGC that's that's up there being you know for sale. Who's loosely related to NGC, I just learned. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're loosely affiliated. I thought it was like part of the company, but then they're like, well, no, it's this other company that's somewhat connected, but not really. Even though our logo is on NGC's website, but yeah. whatever. So, Somebody else, you know what? If if we ever have Miles Standish on the show, you we'll have to it. ask him the relationship between CGC and all the rest. But um, very cool lithograph. Yeah. I mean, seriously, epic. There was also a photo 
of Buzz Aldrin coming down the ramp. Right. Number two, there was the uh, the Wright Brothers propeller, which you should clearly launch into space because that's nothing that belongs on Earth. If I had something rare, uh, the first thing I would do with it is find an astronaut who can put it on a uh, on a rocket, and I'd send that thing straight into orbit. Do we have rocket graphics? Can we do like a? I think so. Oh, you could just do that fire thing up, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, what I would do if I had anything rare, like you just said, is send something already rare into space so it's even rarer. Yeah, I like it. Space stuff. Like this. <laughs> How much stuff spin into space, bro? Not much. We're gonna hashtag that. Not much. Hashtag space stuff. Yeah. Hashtag space stuff. Space stuff. Yeah, get yeah. your space stuff, yeah. bro. So You think anyway, you got bling? You got space stuff? Didn't think so. Yeah, seriously, and it's a great exhibit. You guys gotta come check it out. Lots of fun stuff. Even just some uh, some rubble, some oh, wreckage. The Robins coins, bro. The Robins gold and silver. Right, thank you. Made specifically for that, but also launched into space, right? It did, it did. Yeah. And what I, from what I read, the design of the eagle and the claws that were on those medals ended up carrying forward to the Eisenhower dollar and then later on the Susan B. Anthony dollar as far as design. So the reverse, wow. the reverse of the Ike and the Susan B. Anthony took some something from these original uh, coin designs. That's kind of cool. The Apollo medals. Yeah, it's kind of neat. How much do you think they're worth? The Robbins medals, gold and silver. I'm going to say gold. 50 grand, silver 10 grand. Yeah, you know what? That that sounds about right. I don't know how many were made. I just know they were in space. Yeah. And that sounds like tens of thousands of dollars to me. I concur. All right. I concur. So what we're going to do on the next show is cap it all off. John and I had our auction predictions. I know that I predicted 1.5 for the $1792.10. And I think... Three million for Three the million. 54S, is that what I said? Yep. What'd you say? I said, what, 2.2. For the 54S, yeah. and and the, uh, one is, is it around a million? Uh, yeah, either one 1. or 1.2. 2. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so John's probably gonna be right on both. I have a feeling just by the way the auctions are lining up right now, we'll I have been following them, that looks like it's gonna be more correct. Um, but only time will tell. Uh, we will recap everything that we think is significant that happened there. Uh, feel free to post topics that you'd like to see on Facebook. Ask us some questions. We're gonna do a Q&A show when we have enough questions. Yeah, yeah, you guys have to at least ask one question for us to get a Q&A. At least one. Otherwise, we'll, we'll do be a whole show on that one question. to each other. We'll be doing like truth dare, double dare with hey, each other. Hey, John, so. do you like coins? No. Oh. Uh. <laughs> that was the show. <laughs> so hit us up on social, say what's up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That's right. Uh, like a Medium article if it's really good. If it's not, then um, comment something negative because you can only clap or comment. So do right. one of those two things. Yeah. And until next time, guys. All right. Thanks again. See you later.